Did you ever wonder what people mean when they talk about digital ecosystems? Well, before I provide your definition, let's look at three examples how valuable they can be. In the time frame from 2008 to 2016, Google made about 31 billion US dollars revenue and about 22 billion US dollars profit with the Android operating system. Well, when you see 22 billion profit from 31 billion in revenues, that makes a pretty good profit margin. But how come Google earns money with the Android operating system? Isn't it Android free? Let's look at the next example. The standard search in Firefox was sold in 2007 to Google for 81 million US dollars. So Firefox, some of you might not know it, is a browser. It was one of the early browsers still present today. And as in any browser, you can obviously search the internet. They all have built-in search functions. The question is, what is the default search? You can change it in the settings, but what's the default once you install it anew? Well, in 2007, I said Google paid for being that default and they paid 81 million US dollars. In 2012, it was again Google who paid for it, by then 280 million US dollars. In 2014, it was Yahoo. In 2017, Google again, and the numbers, the payments go up and up, which Firefox earns with setting this standard search engine. If you look at Apple's iOS, well, it's basically the same. In 2014, uh, Google paid about 1 billion US dollars for being the standard search on iOS devices. In 2020, they paid another 9 to 12 billion, and the exact figure is not public for being that default search engine. Why is search so valuable? Well, this is food for thought for you, for answering it, for discussing it. Let's look at what ecosystems are. Well, a digital ecosystem includes a platform that serves as a core on which others can build modules that are designed to extend the service possibilities of the platform. It also includes various social actors who build the platform and various modules and regulatory regime, including standards that bind these heterogeneous actors together. Well, a little abstract this definition, that's so typical for definitions. Let's look at the example on the right hand side. What you see there in the middle is, here with the Apple ecosystem, the iPhone as device. And around the iPhone you see many different parts, infrastructural components like iOS, the operating system, or the iCloud or the like. You see applications and services provided by Apple, like the Safari browser or the built-in podcast uh, app or the like. And you see third-party applications and services. And obviously the iPhone is not the only hardware device Apple has. They also have the iPad, iPod, Macs, and so on. Now, how does this relate to the definition of a digital ecosystem? Well, let's look at the definition again. A digital ecosystem includes a platform. What is a platform here? Well, the platform in this account is the hardware device. It's, for example, the iPhone. And this platform serves as a core. That's why it's depicted as the center on which others can build modules that are designed to extend the service possibilities of the platform. The pure Smartphone itself, the iPhone in this example, isn't worth much without the operating system on it, without the app store on it, and without all the apps on it. So these software components are there, the modules which build on the core, on the platform, and extend the possibilities of the hardware device. And going back to the definition, a digital ecosystem also includes various social actors who build the platform and various models. So who are these social actors? When one social actor is Apple, who designed this ecosystem, who controls this ecosystem, but then you have many other actors, especially the third party app providers who are the actors. And somebody needs to control this. So that's the last part of the definition. The regulatory regime, including standards that bind these heterogeneous actors together. Well, the organization controlling this ecosystem is Apple. They set the regulatory regime. It's bound by regulation, by uh, laws. But besides that, there are very many rules which 
functionalities you're allowed to implement in apps, under which conditions you're allowed to publish them in the App Store, which share of the revenues you as an app provider make Apple wants to have for providing the platform and the like. That the regime which and the standards which are set up by Apple, and I didn't mention the technical standards they set up yet, to bind these heterogeneous actors together to make it possible that all these modules build on the platform. If there wouldn't, for example, be technical standards how to program apps for the iPhone and running on iOS, then it would be hardly possible to have that many different apps all running on this individual platform. So you see the Apple iPhone with all the different software components, all the modules around it, is one example for a digital ecosystem. Let's move on with the next definition. A digital business ecosystem, now obviously adding the word business to the definition, is constructed when the adoption of internet-based technologies for business is on such a level that business services and the software components are supported by a pervasive software environment which shows an evolutionary and self-organizing behavior. Well, and this goes far beyond the simple example of the digital ecosystem with the platform. Now it's more in a business sense, more now it's wider, broader than the definition. Think yourself about examples for that. To provide you one more specific example of an ecosystem, let's think about digital farming, illustrated here with the drone flying over the fields. Um, but what do I mean with digital farming ecosystems? Digital farming ecosystems include, for example, the machine providers, the tractors and harvesters and drones and so on, but then also crop science companies who provide the seeds or the fertilizer or so on. So the farmers who operate um, the equipment, who own the fields, who grow the plants and so on. You have wholesalers, you have other technology providers, you have influencers and so on. There are many different parties, many different stakeholders they are all organized around farming. And now there is not a single one, uh, a single company, a single organization orchestrating that. Think back to Apple. Well, Apple is not the only company uh, organizing, setting standards and the like for smartphones, for smartphone operating systems and apps. Another one is Google with Android. So like that in farming, there are multiple such ecosystems. But all these different stakeholders need to see how do they interact, which standards do they apply and so on for interacting effectively and efficiently in this ecosystem. These are a few examples and definitions around ecosystems.